Joining me now, political consultant Tara Dowdell, Josh Barrow, MSNBC contributor and national correspondent for the New York Times, and Dorian Warren, associate professor of political science and international and public affairs at Columbia University. Okay, this is a thing lefties say all the time. Oh, it's an oligarchy. Oh, your vote, you know. But this was there was real empirical work done here by these two professors who really went through these policy cases. This this isn't just them like sitting around theorizing. They're matching outcomes to public opinion. And that sentence has haunted me since I read it. <laughs> Zero predictive impact. Zero predictive impact. Meaning what you think doesn't translate at all. And the, the question, Dorian, is like, does that mean in some fundamental sense we just are not a democracy? That's absolutely right. And, and thank you for highlighting cutting edge research from political scientists. I really appreciate that. Um, yes, that, exactly. We are an oligarchy. Doesn't mean we're also not a democracy. The two might be compatible uncomfortably. But yes, I want to correct one of your definitions of oligarchy. It just said ruled by the few. It's ruled by the wealthy few. Right. So rich, the rich few. And that's Right. It's not just like people case. whose last name starts with Z. Exactly. Right. And, actually, and actually, if you. Which might be a superior system, actually. Right. Those might be enlightened individuals. But, but we now have the research to back up what occupiers were saying a few years ago. Right, that the political system is broken, that the economy is broken, but the political system is ruled by the one percent, by the rich, by the wealthy, and now we have more social science data to validate that sense that everyday people have that the democracy is not working for them. So, so one of the questions I think, uh, Tara, is well, hasn't it ever been thus? Right? Isn't it always been the case that in a big country that we have all these intermediary institutions? And you're someone who works in politics, yes. right? Um, do you feel like you've seen a shift in the way that influence functions in the world of politics and campaigns? Absolutely. While this is not a new occurrence, this is not breaking news, it has gotten significantly worse, especially when you look at the McCutcheon, the Supreme Court decision that basically made buying influence a constitutional right. So when you look at that and you look at all these other Supreme Court decisions that preceded it, and then from my own experience, I literally have had, when I was in the governor's office, I had someone mail a copy of a check that they had written to the governor to say, this is what they wanted. And reminder, I gave this check. That happens. Now, granted, oh. I threw that letter away. I copy recorded it. Copy of a check it. is trashy. A of a that check. is trashy. But, but most people are not that obvious. It is a subtle thing. It is a understanding. People don't give money out of the kindness of their hearts. Corporations give money because they want or a policy. Too. Exactly. Or individuals because they want very specific policies. And that money is buying those policies. Uh, you know, my favorite line about this is a, a, a grizzly old a Chicago veteran reporter referring to the way that owners of newspapers will push an editorial agenda and the line was no one ever bought a bicycle they didn't want to ride <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think th this finding I, really isn't surprising to me either. And it, it's sort of if you think about the way that an individual, uh, an ordinary individual can affect the political process, the main thing they can do is vote. And so that's a, that's a really big threshold thing. If some elected official does something you disagree with, you can either give them your vote or not. And so if it's not your primary issue, it's difficult for you to hold them accountable. People in the elite have all sorts of ways right. to hold elected officials accountable. It's, not, it's partly about money. It's not just about money. And it's also the circles that these people run in. These are the people that they talk to on a daily basis. This is an important point. I want to show some stats about fundraising mm -hmm. and also talk about whether, Josh, you think it's a good thing, the sort of Bloombergism model of enlightened despotism. Uh, d d does it work? Does it actually <laughs> produce better outcomes right after we take this break?